What's up everybody, it's your boy Marsman here, and today we are talking about Oblivion Override. Ever since the announcement trailer of Oblivion Override was shown during the Steam Fest Now earlier this year, I've always seen this project as a very interesting game to keep an eye on. Getting access to the preview build of the title definitely got me excited to try out the side-scrolling action adventure from developer Humble Mill. Does this game pack a punch that can match the level of other side-scrolling titles? Do you jump into the game on launch day? Let's hack and slice our way right into this. Firstly, let's talk about the good. Story of Oblivion Override is honestly very unique and overall really cool. It's set in a post-apocalyptic wasteland where humanity is a thing of the past. Following the metallic boots of Crimson, a battle-hardened combat bot on a mission deep within Dolce Base. Your overall goal is to decipher the mystery behind the Oblivion Code, which was a fail-safe program devised by humanity in its dying days in an attempt to neutralize hostile AI evolution. The concept behind the story has a very similar vibe to movies like Terminator, where the AIs finally take over. I'm looking at you, Cortana. Essentially, there are a lot of secrets to uncover about the Oblivion Code, but you learn along the way what are the events leading up to this official kind of revolution that happens, on, in my opinion, is just straight up badass. Giving so much meaning to your mission as well as making it unique really does make the player want to continue to play and investigate it all. Good stories are what draws us to play the games longer and longer and Oblivion Override does that very well. I think the best aspect of this game has to be the gameplay. Being a side scroller action game generally it has people think of games like Super Mario Bros, Sonic, and Castlevania. But I feel like Oblivion Override takes some ideas more from Ori and the Will of the Wisps in his gameplay mechanics. The basic concepts of side-scrolling platformers are definitely there, but with the dash and multiple skill attacks, definitely gives this game a lot more needed boost of speed to make it feel unique compared to a lot of other games out there. I feel like when I play this game, I just shotgunned a monster energy drink that basically got me to go all out and try to fight against some robots in this war against this revolution. Throughout the game, you experience the use of over 20 unique weapons, each giving the very distinctive attack style and move set. Whether it's throwing dudes in the air with an oversized battle axe, a double kunai, mega battle hands, or even the use of a damn Christmas tree, I legit was playing boomerang with my silver blade attacking two people at the same time. These abilities you unlock are also extremely diverse, which gives you so much more ways to play, which opens up the replayability of the game. One of my lives, I had unlocked the ability to create a hologram upon every time I dashed, which basically made it so that I can attack two separate enemies at once, or even deal out double damage, because I can either distract enemies to attack my hologram, or I can attack the same robot in two separate directions. You legit fight hordes of enemies along the way. Every single skill that you unlock really does make a difference in this entire experience. The cool aspect of this game is that there are just so many upgrades and abilities that you can focus on, which gives Crimson so much room to work with. Lastly, I feel like one of the coolest aspects of this game has to be the music and the overall art style of Oblivion Override. I mean, I mentioned how the story overall was just so cool alone, but the art style really does give off a dark and broken down world in the state after the robots took over. I mean, even little things like constantly reminding you every time you enter into enemy territory, you essentially face a corpse of a robot that has been hung in front of you to show that there is a lot of danger that lies ahead of you. Just the little details like that show you the level of possible death and give you a distinct look at what the game's vibe is trying to give you. These vibes really give you something unique that is very different compared to a lot of other side-scrolling games I've seen recently and is probably one of the most kind of different I've seen in the Steam marketplace. The music literally slaps every single time I play. I honestly was jamming to the different tracks trying to avoid getting killed. The boss battle tracks are pure adrenaline and it would put the hair on the chest of any boy playing this game. It's a guarantee. And with the good, we have to talk about the bad. One of the aspects of Oblivion Override that may cause some people to get frustrated is the permadeath mechanic. I think for sure there is definitely a fan base out there that is so in for super difficult games that give a player a major challenge that they must overcome. I mean, look at games like Elden Ring, Wolong Dynasty, Returnal. Each one has a massive fan base that enjoys this pure punishment. Each has a similar concept of either permadeath starting from the very beginning or super difficult enemies to punish mistakes and rewards efficiency. I'm not against this mechanic, but I feel like one of the negatives I felt overall was that the map has such an interesting aspect to it to explore, but when you're so worried about getting too weakened by random opponents or worse, get getting killed, it kind of de-incentivizes you to go and travel this pretty sizable map. I mean, one of the coolest aspects of really any of these side-scrolling games is the very unique art styles that are usually embedded throughout all the different locations that you could find. Like for example, when you play games like Ori, 
The art style is so dense with so many different areas to explore where you essentially can earn power-ups or just find different aspects of the story that are hidden within the entirety of this location. But I wouldn't be able to travel to these areas if Ori had followed a very similar concept of the permadeath mechanic. Oblivion Override has a good thing going for them when it comes to this mechanic, mainly because fans like the combat and challenging nature of what the game delivers, but I feel as if if you had the ability to go and travel the map more efficiently with maybe a respawn mechanic instead, then at least I would feel more in kind of invited to go and travel throughout the entirety of the map to find every little aspect that is kind of hidden within. You would literally have people traveling the map to the highest extent possible and they'd really be able to clap any enemy that comes in their pathway. I love the game the way it is, but honestly, with this permadeath mechanic, it does limit the amount that you can explore and kind of experience, mainly because you're just so afraid to lose all the progress that you had up until this point. Going along with the difficulty, I feel as if there's not enough ways to level your player up, especially in the very beginning of this type of game. I feel like most of the time, the difficult aspect of any action adventure title has to be when trying to get past the first boss. Trust me, ever since I was a little kid, I felt like I always got stuck at this first stage of the game, mainly because you usually have zero upgrades and your character is so much of a hurt. And essentially, I can say the same thing here. Basically, there isn't enough ways to earn credits to buy upgrades or weapons early on in the game, which makes it extremely difficult to get past the first level right from the start. As I mentioned, I'm all good with challenge, but at times I feel like I literally was staying stagnant in my ability and strength that I feel like I was going against the boss and I was literally there punching back. I mean, I'm sure I sound like a bitch, but it took me a few times to get my dude decked with as many credits as possible so I'm going to have any sort of luck to fight against the first boss. I feel like you need a little bit of luck in finding different weapons in this game in order for you to find the best one you can use against any kind of enemy you face. I think for newer gamers, it might be easier for them to stick around if you find a better way for them to earn credits to upgrade their character earlier rather than kind of forcing them to constantly die in order to get there. Overall, I feel like there are both positives and negatives. The story, art style, and gameplay are all very solid and give Oblivion Override a very good leg to stand on. Even with the permadeath mechanic, which can be extremely annoying at times, it does not incentivize you to explore the map, but I still had a very enjoyable experience overall. I'm giving Oblivion Override a 7.7 out of 10. The gameplay loop was very fun with the many types of weapons and skills that can give Crimson some crazy ass upgrades. Smaller game overall, but it gives the vibe of a difficult title that will cause a good amount of replayability. It has some really cool art style that makes it unique. Even if it doesn't match the production level games like the original Super Mario Bros or Ori, it still was a great experience. I would recommend jumping into the game and clapping some robots with as many weapons as possible. You know your boy will be acting the crap out of all the AI, liberating the world, soon enough. I want to thank Humble Mill for giving me a preview code of the game. All this is thanks to you guys. I really do appreciate it. What do you think about Oblivion Override? Does it look like a side scroller that can match the AAA monsters? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. Until next time, this is Marsman signing off. Peace out, guys.